Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 3-2 of October, November 2002. Now, with that being said, obviously, we'll try to explain the questions as simple as possible, and hopefully you guys will have a better understanding of each topic as we go through these paper. With that being said, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. So let's move on to question number one. So here we have solve the equation. Solving means finding the unknown. Here we have to find the value of x. Give your answer in the form of this, where a and b are integers, integers are whole numbers. So one by one, how can we simplify this? Because we have to find the answer in terms of ln, apply ln on both sides. This one will be ln over here times this one. Now we should know, let's say we have ln of uh, a, b. This should be equal to ln of a plus ln of b. Makes sense, right? Now basically here we have ln of 5 plus ln of this one. Now same way we should know also ln of a power x is the same as x ln of a. We can send the power in front. So that will be ln of 5 plus 1 minus x ln of 3. Now same over here we can send the power in front as well. It should be 3x minus 1 ln of 2. Okay, so now we have this. Now take your time, expand, simplify, you will have 3x ln of 2 minus ln of 2 is ln of 5 plus ln of 3 minus x ln of 3. Now so in all the x to one side, you will have 3x ln of 2 plus x ln of 3 is equal to ln of 5 plus ln of 3 minus ln of so we become plus here, plus ln of 2. Combine them, so x factorize, you have x, 3 ln of 2, plus ln of 3, is equal to, now combine these one because they're the same, so ln 5 times 3 times 2. That will be ln of 30. Now here you have x, here we can send this on top, you will have ln of 8 plus ln of 3. That will be ln of 30. So finally, x will be simply ln of 30 divided by ln of what? Combining them, so ln of 8 plus ln of 3, we should know. These are the same, they can be combined. 8 times 3, so ln of 24. 24 here will be your answer. So a and b are these integers to be found. So this is your question number 1. Now let's move on to question number 2. So here we have a polynomial p of x given to you by this. Now where a is a constant, it is given that 2 plus 3 is a factor. Now it means that, what does it really mean? It means that if you take this value, equate that to 0, x will be the value of minus 3 over 2. So it means when p takes in the value of minus 3 over 2, you will have 0 remainder. So we have to use this information to find the value of a. So let's, let's see how can you do this. So you will have p of this will be 2 times minus 3 over 2 cube minus 3 over 2 square plus a have to give you 0. Simplify, that should be 2 minus 27 over 8 minus 9 over 4 plus a, that will be 0. Of course, use your calculator. That should be minus 27 over 8 times 2 minus 9 over 4 that should be minus 9. So minus 9 plus a is 0. a will be the value of 9. Part 1 done. Now for part 2, we have to do what? So when a has this value, so when a has this value, solve this one. Now we know p of x is equal to now 2x cubed minus x squared plus 0x minus, so a is plus 9. Now we have to solve this inequality. Obviously, we first have to find all the factors of this one. Now using long division, we understand that if you were to divide by the factor we have, 0x plus 9, divide by 2x plus 3. So how do you make 2x become 2x cubed? Multiply by 1x squared. That will become 2x cubed plus 3x squared. So this will go away. 
minus 1 minus uh, 3 should be minus 4x squared. There you go. Now, how would you make 2 become minus 4 multiplied by minus 2? x become x squared multiplied by x. Half minus 4x squared. And 3 times this will be minus 6x. That will go away. And this will have 6x plus 9. Now, finally, how would you make it? How would you make this one? How would you make 2 become 6 plus 3? That will be 6x plus 9. And as expected, you will be 0. Because when you divide by its factor, it should be 0. Now, finally, we should know what? We should know, well, obviously, p of x is factorized as 2x plus 3 times this quotient x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now, can you factorize this one? Double check. b squared minus 4ac is what? b squared is 4 minus 4 times a times c. That will be 4 minus 12. That will be minus 8, which is less than 0. So this is not factorizable. There will be no real value in this equation. Now, so we have to solve this one. Uh, p of x is less than 0. So obviously the first value is pretty simple. We use this one. So here we have 2x plus 3 will be less than 0. So x will be less than 0 when x will be less than minus this one. This is the first value. Now how about this one? Here, as we can see here we have x squared minus this one plus 3 less than 0. Now we can try to obviously, uh, as we have seen, this one has no real roots. So it basically means that there's no real values for which uh, this could work out, but we can also try some other way. We can always show this is not going to affect my answer by how. We can uh, try to complete the square of this one. So we should know how do you complete squares. So again, x is just x. So again, if you don't know, let's just do comparison. Is equal to x plus a square plus the value of b at the end. So if you would expand, you will have x square plus 2ax plus a square plus b. This is the same. So this will be this one, which is 2a has to be the value of minus 2. So a will be minus 1. That will be minus a square, which is 1, plus b has to be the value of 3. Thus b will be the value of 2. Therefore, I can say, well, this one right here, as you can see, that will be the value of, replace you have x plus b, that will be the value of minus 1 square plus 2. Now you can see this one will never be less than 0. Makes sense, right? Because, as you can see, this is positive, this is positive, so you will never be less than zero, so it's not, we don't need to care about this one, thus the only, it's only possible when looking at this one, when x is less than minus 3 over 2. So this is the only answer possible for part 2, because you can see this one clearly, it will not be less than zero, because it is always going to be positive, that's the reason why. And this is your answer for question part B of number 2. Now let's move on to question number three. So the equation of a curve is given to you by y is equal to this. Now the curve has stationary points in this interval. Now we should know this is 0 and pi by 2, which is 90 degrees. If you look, it is only in your first quadrant. 0 and pi by 2. Now we have to find the x value of this point, giving your answers to 3SF. So again, the idea is we have to find the stationary point. Now, what comes to your mind whenever you see this? We have to look at dy by dx at the value of 0. So let's differentiate. So here we have y is given to you by sine x and then sine 2x. This is obviously a product, so we have to use the product rule. So dy by dx, that will be first, leave the first one as it is times d by dx of this one should be 2 cos 2x. Now plus the second one as it is 
times d by dx of this one, that should be simply cos of x. Now simplify, obviously uh, we have 2x here, 2x, we have x and x here. So let's see what can we do with this. So here we have sine of x times. Here we have 2. Now what is the value of cos square of x? We can break it down for sure. Uh, but first let me do something, because we want to factorize something out first. That will be cos of 2x plus, now this one is what? This one is 2. 2 sin x and cos x times cos x. Let's first simplify this one. That will be 2 sin of x cos 2 of x plus 2 sin of x cos square of x. Do you see this now? Now you can see this is common in both, right? So we can factorize these two outside. 2 sin of x outside, you will have cos 2 of x plus cos square of x is my dy by dx. Now obviously we'll say what, at stationary point, we can say this whole thing right here, which is my dy by dx, have to equate to 2, 0. Obviously you will have this one, which is sine is 0, so sine of x will be 0. Of course, x will be 0 or 180 degrees, which is pi, but here x is between the value of 0 and pi by 2, so it does not include this one, nor this one, so it will not be good. Now how about this one now? We have cos of 2x plus cos square of x is 0. Now we can break this down in terms of cos square. We should know this becomes 1, sorry, 2 cos square of x minus 1 plus cos square of x is 0. Now simplify, 2 plus 1 is 3, cos square of x is equal to, send this over here, become 1. So you will have the value of cos square of x is equal to 1 over 3. Thus cos of x is simply plus minus root of 1 over 3. Fair enough, right? Now we can have two values obviously, but we have to choose. Now cos of x can be plus root 1 over 3, or cos of x can be minus root 1 over 3. Now something we should know here obviously, when cos is positive, it's in the, in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. When cos is negative, it is in the this one or this one. Now as you can see, we don't have anything here, so there's no need to look for this one. It will not be in the first quadrant, so there's no need to look at this one. Now obviously we only care about the first quadrant here for x. x will be simply cos inverse of 1 over over 3. Using radians here as so a cos inverse of 1 divided by root 3. That will be 0 0.955 correct to 3SF. And this is your question number 3. The description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.